Hi guys, how's it? Man, I know it has been a little bit since we have seen each other. Uh, had a 12-day run at work without a single day off. It's inventory time. Got it done. Came out perfectly. Like I said, still just trying to get back into the swing of things. Old company, but new position and just trying to put my stamp on it. But I couldn't forget about you guys. Man, we've had heaps of rugby outside of the international season. The Safa team's doing, uh, the Stormers are a bit disappointing, but uh, everyone doing pretty damn well against those European counterparts in the uh, the Champions League of rugby there uh, in Europe. And it's looking, it's going to be looking really cool when some of those teams have to come to South Africa to play. But uh, as you can see by the title of this video, we did one last year. We'll do one this year, man. We'll do a rundown of the Springboks international season for the year 2022 inclusive uh, kind of just a good time to kind of run through some of the scores. Uh, this video will be kind of broken in half. In the middle, there's going to be a nice little clip section for you guys. Uh, any of you guys that don't follow me on Instagram or uh, now TikTok, uh, you should follow me on there, man. I have a really good time editing these videos, adding some music that I'm into. So some of you guys might think it's a little too heavy for you. But uh, that shows you I, I listen to a lot of heavy stuff. I do listen to some soft stuff too, but it just doesn't go well. Um... Morrissey's a bit too whiny for rugby and Depeche Mode's a little too dancey for rugby but uh, we'll go run through this we'll run through the Wales tour the rugby championship there'll be a break we'll run through the international season and then we will talk about some notes I will give my Springbok awards uh, the categories are going to be uh, best offensive player best defensive player newcomer and or rookie of the year and bounce back player of the year and then i will do a bomb squad award for our best guy coming off the bench that traditionally came off the bench so let's go ahead and just get into it man we'll go ahead and start off with this wales tour um kind of the joke everyone scotland went to argentina england went to to uh australia ireland had great success in New Zealand, and it was kind of the joke, oh, uh, the Welsh, Welsh hadn't beat us in so long in, in South Africa, and uh, we ended up going 2-1 and one against them. We'll kind of go through a little bit of the notes from each game. The first game, 32-29 victory. Um, I felt like we should have won a lot bigger than that. Uh, second week comes around. We come in on the, the 9th of July, and um, we pretty much put... Uh, Jack Adams gets a try at the 77th minute for the Welsh, and he basically plays a B-side of the Springboks. Again, Andre Pollard was the captain. Um, we had Joseph Dweba and Chuku. A lot of guys making debut on that afternoon. Um, pretty pretty piss-poor playing, in my personal opinion. We should have beat the brakes off of them still. Uh, but we, get the, we take the L back on July the 9th, 13-12, by a single point. We come back restocked and reloaded a week later, and we beat the brakes off of them. 30-14, the final. Pollard money kicking that game, 6-6. Six six. Um, Khaleesi has a try, and Colby does unfortunately get injured at the 20th minute in that one. It was not the first time he got hurt this year, it seems. So we skip ahead, maybe we get like a couple of weeks off, and then we begin the rugby championship. Like I said, man, the All Blacks, they... Um, they were exposed by the Irish on that tour. So we come in, man, round one. We're looking to, to keep the punishment going for the All Blacks, and we do. We deliver a 26-10 scoreline to the All Blacks in round one back on August the 8th. Caleb Clark uh, begins his conquest of knocking people out, uh, knocking two guys out in the span of two weekends. Uh, this one, unfortunately, Fof to Clark, 43 seconds in. His head makes contact with the mountainous thigh leg of Caleb Clark, and, I mean, he's knocked out cold. So he's out for the game 43 minutes in. Kurt Lorenza gets a try at the eighth minute. You're going to be hearing his name a lot in this this year, obviously, him having a hell of a season, um, and gets a red card also at the 74th minute. Um uh, Bit of a high hit there on a bit of a collision there with Jordy Barrett there at the 74th minute. So I think he ended up getting suspended for like two or three games out of that one. But it was debut try and a red card. Uh, for those of you not familiar with ice hockey, if you get a goal, an assist, and you get in a fight in a game, that's called a Gordy Howe hat trick. So we need to kind of come up with a name for that in rugby. If you get a try and a red card in your first game, there needs to be a special award for that. <laughs> 
But uh, uh, we do beat them 26-10, start out the rugby championship. We go the next week. A lot of people are picking the Springboks to win big again over the All Blacks. Uh, they're a wounded animal in a corner. We're on the surge. We're getting everything together. Things looking good. And what do we do a week later? We go out and lay an L, man. 35-23. Uh, Valenza gets a yellow card within the first three minutes. Clark knocks out Jesse Creel this week at the 11th minute. Oh, that was such a bad, bad game. Uh, Polar does go 5-for-5 five five kicking, but it's all for naught, man. The All Blacks had our number early in that game, and we, we unfortunately took the L. We get two weeks off. Uh, we, we, we head to, to the land of Straya, the Straya land, uh, with uh, head coach Dave Rennie still trying to upright the ship. Loses international terrorist Quaid Santini Cooper earlier in the year uh, for the year. Yeah, uh, I think Quaid's finally, um, you know, he's, uh, he's at his base camp with him and all of his terrorist friends reworking, I think it was his ankle or his knee. Um, I can't believe they let that man into my country. Once again, I'll never, never give up on that. That man is a terrorist. Yeah, I just... It's not the same hatred I have for a certain OF that plays for England, but I just don't like Quaid Santini Cooper. He's evil. Anywho, we take an L that week again. 25-17 the final. Uh, Joseph Dweba, who I've never been impressed with, he comes off in the 11th minute. That's like, we go 11 minutes till we have our first scrum. He doesn't even make it into the first scrum. He's bleeding from his head. We bring in Malcolm Marks, and uh, Pollard has massive kicking issues in this game. Uh, and then we get the beginning saga of the Makazoli Bapipi Samukarivi saga um, of the no-arms tackle as Colby or as uh, Mapipi is trying to cross, no penalty on it. Well, like I said, we take a L, 25-17, not looking good. I I thought we looked bad against New Zealand. We looked even worse against Australia, in my opinion. Cut back around the very next weekend. We, we get a change of fortunes, man. 24-8, a, a victory. Uh, we are now 2-2 two and two in this tournament. Um, God. Kanan Moody gets a try on debut. Very proud for him. And Mapipi gets his revenge crosses over in beautiful fashion and steps over the top of Karivi and kind of says a few things and uh, we get some extracurricular activities we get um Eben doing what Eben does best and going beast mode on uh front row player Alan Alatoa uh for Australia but a silver lining, you do see them after the game cracking a beer open together, but it was like, damn, man. When you see Eben get those big eyes and he's grabbed you, yeah, I don't want to be on the end of that ever. That man is scary when he's pissed off. But uh, we get the W, man, 24-8. We're now 2-2 two and two in this tournament. And this is like a unique year because nobody's going undefeated. Everybody's losing a game. We saw Argentina shock the world by beating the All Blacks in round, uh, their first game against the All Blacks and then turning around and getting spanked, like spanked bad by the All Blacks. So bad that Pablo Matera, as they're ending the game, you see him like, you know, they're trying to shake and Dan Coles comes by and he shoves Dan Coles. Like, he doesn't even want to shake his hand like he's pissed. But, um, yeah, like I said, it was a very unique rugby championship this year. So we got to go into the last two rounds, Argentina. Argentina, like I said, shocking the world, beating the All Blacks. Second time in two years. They did it with uh, current Jackals um, assistant coach Mario Ledesma the previous year, beating the All Blacks for the first time in history, beating them again with Michael Chica, uh, and uh, then playing a big old goose egg. But we do go... Two for two with Argentina, getting the victories, 36-20 in round one, and then throw, uh, I guess that would be round five, and then 38-21, needing to win by a minimum of like 35 points. So the really only major things I can talk about those two games was, God, our second half, we were rubbish. Like, we were up 22-6 in the first game, and they came back and made a game out of it. Our second half, these, both the Argentina games, some of the worst second half rugby I've ever seen us play. But um, we did get Damian Valenza starting at fly half on both of those games. Um, actually, no, Friend Stan starts the last game. 
I did a video, can he do it? Does he do it? He struggles with kicking early. I mean, uh, he couldn't kick to touch, man. And it was something that, like, we don't expect from a guy like Franz. Like, he's usually got the golden boot, man. I mean, he can kick from distance. He's got a really solid skill sets. And he struggled, man. Um, Jesper, in that second game, Jesper Visa does get his very first uh, gets his very first try in the green and gold. Uh, and currently, Arenza also does get another try. Like I said, we'll hear his name a lot. But um, we end up coming a single point behind the All Blacks in the table. T uh, the All Blacks do win the rugby championship, and we come in, like I said, a single point behind them. At this point, I we should have won this rugby championship. We just failed to deliver. Uh, we, we laid two go goose eggs in a row versus the All Blacks and then later the Aussies, the Wallabies, and we should have won both of those games. Maybe not the All Blacks one, but definitely the Australian one. Eh, we should have never lost to them. Uh, that's a wounded beast at this point. But uh, yeah, so we get a little bit of a break, which is what we'll have now. I hope you guys enjoy these clips. If I miss, I spin again, spin again, spin again, and I might just hit it. I can never snitch. That's on my kid. I put a chopper on a blade, put a blade on a slip. I keep my right hand spinning like my last name Smith. Good step. Billemser's got Larue inside him. There's Billy Larue. Arenser on the right. There goes Arenser, and Arenser is step Smith, and Arenser. Wow, that's all I can say. Stewart there, that's fine. You can see the, the try score on and say, <coughs> excuse me, right. just pushing back the way. Billy Rue doesn't botch things up. Just wait. Look at this for a step. Marcus Smith is excuse no me. slouch. Marcus Smith is light on his. So now we have gone through the Welsh Tour and the Rugby Championship. Now we move on into the month of November as we begin our Northern Tour. Four games when we got Ireland, France, Italy, and England. Uh, Ireland and France both ahead of us in rankings at this point and looking to go in and kind of establish everything early and kind of show, hey, who really does rule this all. Uh, game on November the 5th, man. Ireland, we end up taking another L, 19-6 to the final. Currently, Arenza try at the 75th minute. Colby, uh, we lose Pollard for the entire thing. He does not play in any of the Northern Tour. Uh, Cheslin Colby with kicking issues. Valenza with kicking issues. Colby goes 1-3 of three kicking on the day. We end up leaving way more points than we should have, and we should have easily won this game, but the kicking issues definitely showed uh, big time there in that 19-16 loss to Ireland. Um, 
Ireland just playing some supreme level. Johnny Sexton, even at his age, still carrying that team very capably. We, no, next week, we go into France, also ahead of us in the rankings. 30-26, um, to 26, we take another nasty loss. Colby kicks much better in this game. Uh, the big ones being uh, Peter Steftatoy getting a red card at like the 11th minute. So we're playing down for 69 minutes of an 80-minute game. Uh, DuPont gets one at the 47th minute for a head collision. Um, Colby gets hurt, has to go down again. He gets a HIA, and uh, we get to see Foff the Clerk kicking. And we, unfortunately, like I said, lose by the score of 30-26. to 26. Another game that we, we actually played better once we went down a man, weirdly enough. But uh, unfortunately, another loss to a higher-ranked opponent than us. And then we get... Another round of what what would be a year of a Springbok fan without having another Rossi Erasmus tirade. This one, this time, unfortunately, via Twitter where everyone can see it. And I even made a video like, dude, you're not helping us, man. People hate us as it is. And this didn't help them like us any more than they did. But, um, you know, he gets another suspension out of this. But uh, there is a bit of silver lining at the end of it all, and we'll kind of bring that up uh, possibly at the end of the video. So we're 0-2 on this Northern Tour so far. Going in to play Italy, who had been, I believe, four or five years since they had beaten us last. Kind of same situation, but no, because we were definitely a lot lower back then. Um, and, man, it just comes alive. We, we go down early uh, to Italy uh, Colby struggles a bit with kicking, but we end up beating the absolute brakes off of Italy. But that fullback who did end up getting a newcomer of the year uh, for them, uh, we beat them by 63 to 21. And it was just, it was nice to see our offense finally come alive. Uh, and it came alive in a big way there in Italy back on the 19th of November. Uh, currently, it runs a man of the match, two tries, 100 some odd meters carry. He just. Everybody had a, 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 a game that day. I mean, you had Cheslin Colby. We kicked the restart. He jumps, grabs it, scores, reaches for his hamstring. Yeah, yeah, that was... you got to take care of yourself, Colby. You get busted up too quick already, man. But uh, obviously, Kurt Lorenzo, like I said, man of the match. Great, great game. So we go into the final game of the Northern Tour. This, a team that we had lost to by a single point a year earlier, and that would be the Palms, the English, uh, captained by Skidmark, number 12, uh, Marcus Smith, looking to have a very breakout year. And damn, man, we go in there and we just, we put on a clinic against them. 27-13, the try. The scoreline doesn't even show, man. It was so one-sided. Like, we, we we own these guys. I mean, try of the year at the 32nd minute, in my opinion. It's on the clips. You see it, man. We get Valenza back deep. We get Curly coming around the outside. Let him know, hey, I'm open, I'm open. They begin the run. He offloads it to LaRue. LaRue gets about 20 more meters. Gets it out to Curly. Curly makes eye contact with Marcus Smith as Marcus Smith buckles his knees. <clears throat> and Kurt Lee's off to the races, man. I mean, you even got Skidmark number 12 for them, their captain, chasing him down, and he makes eye contact as he dives over this trial. It was absolutely the try of the year, in my opinion. Beautiful try from Kurt Lee. What a great year that young man has had. And uh, this also would become, uh, oh, yeah, and then we get Thomas the Toy with the red, which everybody called for. Oh, yeah, he's probably going to get a red card quick. Yeah, he got a red card within 10 minutes of entering the game. Um, and this would end up being, unfortunately, Eddie Jones' last game coaching uh, the English. 73% uh, win percentage, highest winning percentage of any English coach in history. That crazy Tasmanian Eddie Jones. Even uh, former uh, you know, skipper Sir Clive Woodward having pretty distasteful words to say about Eddie. I kind of... Thought that those were an ill taste from from uh, Sir Clive Woodward, the Rugby World Cup winning coach for the 2003 English team. I, those were a little distasteful, bro. Like, I'm not a fan of Eddie by any means. But he did a lot for the team. Like, he did a lot for the team. And it just kind of, at the end of the day, the magic kind of wore off. And it was time. The antics were over. And it was time for England to move on less than a year from the World Cup. 
So that ended up being it. So we go eight and five on the year. That's a 61.54 winning percentage. That is not good, guys. I'm not happy with that at all. I'm not happy with that whatsoever. But, but alas, we did discover a lot of things this year. And one of the things I wanted to bring up was I made notes on games where Damian Valenza started at number 10. Uh, he started a total of five games at fly half. Um, we did get to see Manny Libok come on later in the year. Um, but that game, the, the last two games in particular, Italy and England, um, he really... I don't know what it is about Valenza at number 10 at fly half at first 5 eighth, but our offense just seems to come alive when he's back. You know, like, yeah, we've had our losses with him at 10. But really, and particularly the last two games on the year, man, it, it was like... You're used to having Willie LaRue under the ball in the back or having Mapipi or having Colby or whoever the other wing is. And it was kind of like we had an extra set of hands back there. And when he got the ball, he always just he always just seemed to have space. And he was able to kind of do what he needed to do, manipulate the other team's defenses and to, to, to open space for us, whether he chose to run it forward and make the offload or kick it forward and you had Kurt Lee or Macazzoli or Cheslin chase it down. We just seem to come alive with him at fly half this year. Like our best offensive games were with him at fly half. Now the unfortunate part is some of our worst defensive games were with him at fly half. And we were so critical of Hundre and his kicking that when he has a bad game, we go like, what the hell are we going to do? Valenza didn't really ever have a great game kicking this year, but those games we were able to score tries, so you don't you're not so critical of it when he's not doing well. It's like with Andre, if Andre's having a bad game, the team has a bad game, but with Damian, he could be having a cut game, but our offense comes alive. Maybe that was the addition of Kurt Lorenza, Ken and Moody, these guys coming in. And maybe it was also the fact that Willie LaRue had a really, really great year, you know. But that's just what I saw as a, as a fan on the outside. I just felt like the offense came a lot more alive. Not to say that Andre Pollard is not world class. He's just a different kind of guy at 10 than Valenza is. Valenza is just a little bit more, he'll catch the ball, he'll kind of do a little stutter step, or he'll just kind of put on the, you know, put on the jets and start going. And it's like, I felt like we just had a little bit more of an open offense in the back with Damian at 10. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just how I saw it. I felt like our offense flourished a lot more with him under the ball in the back. Once again, just a personal opinion for me. But uh, that was what I saw in the year. Like I said, 8-5, and five, 61. That's, this is not an acceptable win rate. But we end the year ranked number f and fourth a single tenth of a point behind the All Blacks, which I don't even think the All Blacks should be ranked that high personally. But that's just me. And we come to the end of the year awards for the Springboks. Uh, I've got five categories here. These are only Springbok only awards, and we will go through them thusly. We will start off with the Bomb Squad Player of the Year. I don't think there was any question of who this should go to. Malcolm Marks, what a... I'm trying to think of the correct adjective that isn't a bad word, but damn, what a machine off the line out. What a machine at the breakdown. He pisses other teams off so much because he's just in there getting the ball, or when we come off the line out, he takes his place at the back of the mall he just drives that shit, and he does not give a damn. That's what I love about Malcolm Marks. He does not give a damn. He's there to win. He's there. To, he's not there just to play. He's there to win. So he gets my Bomb Squad Player of the Year. Then we come back to the Bounce Back Player of the Year. A lot of these are going to be somewhat American football terms because I live in America, but Bounce Back Player of the Year, a guy that's been in the mix for many, many years, Maybe had, maybe not the greatest year last year, but definitely came in. And that was without a question, Willie LaRue. That guy showed his veteran expertise this year on the pitch time and time again. Great under the ball, great at directing the traffic from the back. 
getting, uh, you know, running his mouth a bit too much at times. But, you know, yeah, we agreed with everything you said up to Nick White, to his face. <laughs> I mean, you know, he was that thorn in the side of teams. And you saw it game in, game out, especially that last game against England. He was just pissing the palms off. He was getting in their shit quick. And God, what a great year having him at bat, catching the ball, making the decisions on the fly, and just being that veteran presence on the pitch that we, we so desperately needed at times. So that's why he gets the bounce back player of the year. Then we come into the rookie of the year, the newcomer of the year category. And I don't think there was any question at who this belonged to. I mean, what a gem we have found in Kurtley Lorenza. Like, what a beautiful gem we have found you know when you have a guy like Cheslin Colby Makasolima PP we we have those guys but damn Kurtley came in and just I'm here let's go and I mean like we enjoyed it from his debut getting a try getting a red card getting try he has more tries than he has caps at this point man Kurtley Arenza was on fire this year in the green and gold what a treat we've gotten as Springbok fans this year with Curtly out on that pitch, man. It was just a sheer joy. And not just the tries. Man, the guy was making tackles. He was in the mix, man. Like, he was a young guy who wanted to put his foot and be like, put his hand up and say, like, look, I'm here. Let's go. I want to be a part of this. And if that man is not part of the future for the, for, for the Springboks, I don't know what Rossi and Jack are doing. That man is a sheer joy every single game we get to watch him. I haven't seen... I mean, he's got that vigor that's just like... He wants to be in the mix. He wants to score tries. He wants to be involved with everything. And you love that when you see these young guys come out and do that. Because it's just magic when you see him on the pitch. So, newcomer, rookie of the year, Kurt Lee. So, I'm going to have... Two most valuable player, player of the year, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to have one for offensive ability and defensive ability. And we will start off with the defensive ability MVP. And to me, no disrespect to Sia, but really the true leader in that forward pack. And that is the boogeyman himself, Eben Etzebeth. I mean, that dude leads by example if you're not playing as hard as Evan you're not playing hard enough and there's very few guys that play as hard as that man does game in game out a leader on and off the pitch in the locker room you see him guys look at him for guidance and I don't think um there's been the debate of you know obviously the greatest combo we've ever had and the enforcer Bucky Sputa and Victor Matfield, but Evan really moved pack past Bucky's in my opinion this year, uh, as far as the greatest locks we've ever had, and I would even say greatest locks in history. The man is unstoppable. I mean, he's just he's he's not just in it to play; he's in it to win. And he gives. If you're not giving what he gives every game, you're not giving enough. And there's very few people that give as much as that that man does every single game on the pitch. He is doing this for the love of the game and when he puts on the green and the gold for the love of his country. There's no question Evan is the leader of this team. So I give him the defensive most valuable player, defensive player of the year. And then we got to go to the offensive MVP. And um, I know I'm probably going to have a few people. If he'd gotten to play the whole year, it would have been Luke on um, I'm no question in that. But I'm going to have to give it to the to the rookie, man. Kurt Lee, man. I mean, he was on fire. I already said her. That man had a hell of a debut year this year. And I felt like it was only right. If Lucano had been able to play the whole year, I would have given it to him. Um, I had a few debates in some of these categories. Quagga Smith had a hell of a year this year. Um, you know, it's it was really hard to pick some of these, and some of them were easy. Obviously, the Eben one was easy. LaRue was pretty easy. 
Uh, the newcomer was no question. It was Kurt Lee. That man, we were lucky to be seeing this happen. But with that being said, that is the last of the end of this video. I know it's a pretty long one, guys, but I appreciate you guys, all of you subscribers. I've got a couple of more on the mix, man. We've got, obviously, all kinds of rugby news. And then, I mean, the Dallas Jackals have been signing. I need to learn Spanish. That tells you what the Dallas Jackals have been signing at. at nothing but Argentinians. So we are getting ready for that. Obviously, me being the captain or the uh, president of the fan club for the Dallas Shackles, I'll be doing lots of content for those guys. But uh, yeah, if you don't subscribe to me on Instagram, you should. Follow me on TikTok, exact same name. It's the Fairweather Rugby Fan with two X's. Um, and you can find me on TikTok. I'm doing edits constantly, and I'm also doing other stupid videos, non-rugby related, just mostly about music and pop culture. But uh, predominantly, I try to keep it about the rugby guys. But um, once again, thank you guys for all of your continued support as we go into a new year, the end of the year here, Christmas time. I hope all of you are with your families, and I know it's not always about what you can get your family. But, um, you know, if you can provide for your family, dude, it's, it's that time of year, man. We're men. We're men. This is what we do. We provide for our families. And uh, it's always good, especially if you've got little ones, to just kind of gather around and be thankful for at least the family you have, man. Because there's a lot of people that don't. But uh, I will talk to you guys all again very soon. Cheers, guys. And once again, thank you guys for the support. And will it work? Uh, some of these videos, this is bad. I'm just going to do it manually. Cheers, guys.